Welcome to the Globe for this first edition of Sun in Focus. On behalf of the audiovisual team, we would like to present a selection of the latest videos from at CERN. That's right, every six weeks we'll bring you the latest in CERN's activities from LHC startup to the computing grid featuring the various experiments. With visuals and acoustics. The agenda of this first edition of Sun in Focus features the visit of the Prime Minister of Malta, Lawrence Gonzi. CMS and the final descent of the YE1 NCAP. The departure of the UA1 magnets to Japan. The startup of sectors 4 and 5. And finally, in our sports roundup, we'll talk about football. Your guide will be Anna Cook. And Jacques Fichet. The audiovisual team filmed the visit of the Prime Minister of Malta, Lawrence Gonzi. On the agenda of this meeting, held on 10th January, was the signature of a collaboration agreement for the development of scientific and technical cooperation between CERN and the Republic of Malta. On Thursday, the 10th of January, 2008, Laurence Gonzi, Prime Minister of Malta, visited CERN. They paid a visit to the CMS experiment at Point 5 in Sesi, where they were welcomed by CERN's Director General Robert Imar. On this day, an agreement was signed to ensure the development of technical and scientific collaboration between the Maltese government and CERN. Nicholas Summert, a Maltese engineer working at CERN, was delighted with the agreement that represents a first step towards a concrete collaboration between the Maltese government and CERN. Last tango mid-air for CMS. The YE1 NCAP is the last CMS component to wave goodbye to the green grass of Ceci and plush into the depths of the CMS cavern. Here we are at beam level in the cavern of CMS and you can see here the, the place that remains for the lowering of uh, YE minus one, which will happen on Tuesday, 22nd of January 2008. So we are here under the pit where we will lower down the last end cup on Tuesday. This will be the end cup that will uh, have the nose that will enter into the barrel and that will take the space that remains here. You can see here the people preparing the last uh, things to make a last and perfect lowering. You can see here the support uh, of the beam pipe, of the future beam pipe, and we will pass only 25 centimeters along this uh, support, but due to our simulations, this should go fine. Uh, in order to make the shipment, we uh, actually will use uh, about 40 feet containers, which uh, will leave uh, CERN in the following weeks. We'll go by train uh, to Northern Europe uh, in Anvers. Uh, there, these 40 containers will be uh, loaded on a ferry, uh, which will then travel on sea for uh, four weeks and arrive uh, in Korea. Uh, there in Korea, we will change the ferry so the 40 containers will be put on a new ferry, uh, which will then take us from Korea to the uh, Itashinaka port uh, in Japan, which is located uh, three kilometers away from the final destination of this magnet. All the operation la at CERN lasted about one year. Uh, this involved uh, uh, refurbishing all the components, verifying that they were still uh, in order and functioning properly. And where we are today here is really the final phase of this uh, one year long operation. The ramp up of current to dipole and quadrupole circuit is achieved in sector four and five of the LHC, featuring 154 dipoles over three kilometers. We met Roberto Saban, coordinator of the LHC startup. Okay, now we're carrying out this very important test because it is for the first time that we're taking to nominal current the dipole circuit of an LHC sector. The circuit consists of 154 15 meter magnets in series. Uh, in order to be able to power this, uh, this circuit, we uh, have individually tested the different systems that make this possible. It is the cryogenics, of course, which cools down the, uh, the magnets and regulates the temperature around 1.9 Kelvin. 
Then we have an interlock system which verifies that all the uh, conditions required for powering are there. Then we have, of course, the, the power converters which feed the current into the circuit and the um, quench detection system that protects the magnets by verifying that the magnets are still superconducting. After the, the qualification of these circuits, we will go to the, um, to the quadrupole circuit, which is made of uh, 51 uh, quadrupole in series. There are two of these circuits. And in each LHC sector, there are about 200 circuits, 120 of which are simple, made of one magnet and uh, while the others are more complex and stretch over a 3.3 kilometer sector. What you see on this screen is a quench, uh, the temperature excursion that we have observed following a quench uh, at a much lower current, at 2 kiloamperes, which we have triggered. So you see here the sharp rise and then the recovery of the nominal temperature in about 20 minutes, 20-25 minutes. And on, on the other side, on, here on these two graphs, you see the temperature of the neighboring magnets, which are these ones. In fact, the quench was triggered on this magnet, and this is the profile. And uh, what you see here and here are the profiles on the two neighboring magnets. So we had a training quench in one of the magnets of this chain. <laughs> Uh, this is something that we expected because, as I said earlier, these magnets were stored for years outside. Now uh, we're going to cool down these magnets and look for a higher uh, <laughs> current level. But we might not reach a nominal current during this run because anyway this sector, as I told you, is supposed to be warmed up. Uh, and therefore uh, we will probably maybe experience other training quenches. After this test, in about three weeks' time, we will warm up uh, the sector in order to connect the triplet and pass, continue with the commissioning of another set. In News in Brief this month, last welding work, it was never going to be an easy task. On this day last year, just one sector had been completed, but now all eight are ready. All in all, around 1,700 magnets have been connected together, and this has required a total of about 65,000 electrical splices of superconducting cables and 40,000, that's 10 kilometers worth, of leak-tight welds. The final bolt is now in place. On the 7th November, in the bowels of the LHC tunnel, CERN's Director General Robert Remar tightened a gold-plated bolt for the last arc interconnection in Sector 1-2. This symbolic gesture marks the completion of all the arc interconnections in all eight sectors. The 8th and 15th February respectively saw the transport and descent of the small wheel for the Atlas experiment at point one. Like briefly separated twin sisters, Atlas's small wheels were once again reunited at point one on St. Valentine's Day. The lowering of the small wheels into the tunnel will mark the end of the installation of the detector components for the experiment. In November, a number of female students from the Collège du Lémont in Geneva came to CERN to experience a shadowing day with women in the IT department. And finally, we're looking for volunteers for CERN's open days. Don't hesitate to sign up for these open days which will take place on the 5th and 6th of April. All these videos are available on CDS or on cern.ch slash video. That's all for this edition. We'll meet again in six weeks for news and in focus.